When news broke this week that Richard Preble was returning to the ACT Party a decade after he stood down as leader to become the party's new campaign director, a few eyebrows were raised. He's known as one of our most astute political animals. He's even been described as the country's best political strategist. He says he's aiming for ACT to win the seat of Epsom in Auckland and bring nine MPs into Parliament at this year's general election. So who is the man behind such grand plans? ACT's new campaign leader, Richard Preble, joins me now. Good morning. And good morning. Why would you want to spoil a perfectly good life by getting back into this filthy old game? Oh, that's a very good question, and uh, w- w- one I have been asked by my wife. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, well, how, where should I start? Um, Ac- I've been very distressed by where the ACT Party is, mm. and uh, got. To, and I was asked uh, what should happen, and I said, look, when you've got a good product and a busted brand... You need to do a clean out. Mm. You need some fresh faces, new ideas, new people. Um, and uh, then I was introduced to, to Dr. Jamie White, uh, and I had to say I was very impressed. Mm. Uh, I wonder where, where they managed to find him. Mm. And I was chatting to him, <clears throat> and I encouraged him to run for the leadership. And he, he ran. Uh, I didn't do the selecting, but, but he was selected, and I was feeling pretty good. And then he rang me up and said, I'd like you to be my campaign manager. And I couldn't think fast enough as to why I shouldn't do it. <laughs> and, and so I found myself um, the, the campaign director. Well done. So what's wrong with ACT? Uh, you said the brand is busted. Oh, I understand we're only talking for 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, it will take too long for yeah. me to go through all the things <laughs> that, that have happened. And look, that's in the past. Mm. Uh, it's personality. Look, when parties start fighting amongst themselves, the electorate switches off. Mm. So that's the past. Um, I can tell you what's right with the brand, um, which is going for it, because when you look at the political parties, Act is actually the only party that says, look, government should do less rather than more, so we're not going around making promises. And we're the only party that actually says, look, taxes in New Zealand are too high, and by OECD standards they are. Mm. We ought to have a low tax, and we're the sort of party that says, look, we need less red tape in New Zealand rather than more. So... We're completely different. In fact, I saw a comment from John Key saying, look, the ACT Party's got a slot in Parliament. There's no one else um, who raises those sorts of issues. Yeah. And I'd love to think the majority of New Zealanders don't think that the government should solve every problem. Unfortunately, they do. But there's a minority of us who think people should take a bit of personal responsibility. So we know that it's about 15% of the electorate mm. who ought to be ACT voters. Now, they who, who all... obviously need representation. They need representation. Yeah, okay. Mm. Now, Gordon Campbell said this week that bringing you back is evidence that ACT actually hasn't had a fresh idea since its very beginning. Well, he might say that. And, and let me agree with him on one point. Some of ACT's ideas and values are actually very old. And we're, we are more like, say, the Liberal Party uh, that, of Dick Seddon, mm. um, and it's a great shame his party went out of existence, than any, than any other party. So many of the things that we believe, uh, the people who first came to New Zealand believed in, you know, they believed in private property rights, they believed in uh, the right to contract and the like. But what makes us fresh and new is that no one else is saying what we're saying. Mm. Okay. Nobody else is saying, hey, why don't we let the market try and solve this problem? Well, here's, here's, here's where, where you, I think, have a problem. Um, Jamie's incest boo-boo this week uh, reminded me of John Banks' sole dissenting voice on plain packaging of cigarettes and Roger Douglas's voucher system way back in the time. Logically, you can see the reasoning, but politically, they can be, um, they can be dangerous. They can be suicide, you know. And is Axe's major problem always been balancing ideology and real politic? Uh, no. I mean, some people would say things that we say are suicide because they don't agree with it. And we actually only need 5% of the electorate to agree with me. And so one was taking plain packaging on cigarettes. Mm. Um, you might think that's a great and logical uh, measure. Mm. I don't. It's a, it's a legal product. And if it's a legal product, you ought to be able to advertise it. Mm. And I'm quite happy to go and argue with about cigarette taxes. But I, I will for a second. I'll put something to you which you might not have thought about. People talk about poverty, and it's going to be an argument in this year's election, and I live in a valley where there's a lot of poverty. And every now and again, I hear about a household where the kids are staying at home because they actually got no food. Mm. And I zip around there, and I give them some food. Every single one of those households, without exception, 
all of the adults in the household smoke, and they all bought cigarettes before they bought food. Mm. And the left has put up the cost of cigarettes and saying, this is great. The left has actually taken food off the table because people have got a choice. And if you're an addict, you're going to support your addiction uh, before okay. you before but, you but, buy food. But getting back to the incest uh, thing this week, you know. Well, okay, no, no, but no, no, I'm not going to talk about that. Oh, because, I don't want to talk about because incest. Because that was a got, no, because yeah. you are. That was a gotcha question to someone who's new in politics and he's never going to answer that question uh, again. Like that it's, again. Well, it's nothing to do with the ACT mm. Party. Um, ACT hasn't got a policy on it. And actually, he said to the journalist, thinking the journalist was reasonable, mate, this is an irrelevant question. Mm. There hasn't been anybody mm. <laughs> actually prosecuted for the description that you're okay. making in New Zealand's, I think, in New Zealand's history. Okay, well, and, yet, and yet you, yeah. he, <laughs> and everyone else wants to talk about it, yeah. whereas Jamie White... Uh, has learnt the lesson, and next time he's asked, he's going to say, hey, I'm the leader of the ACT Party. I'm not here to talk mm. about what I talked about as a philosopher from, from mm. Cambridge. Right. And I'm happy to talk to you about the reason we should have lower taxes in New Zealand, but I'm not going to go on your gotcha questions. Yeah, OK. Well, it just reminds me of uh, the very early days of ACT, you know, when uh, Perigo and Coddington decided to run away because it wasn't libertarian enough. And now Dr Jamie White seems to have those sorts of libertarian values, which means you can argue for incest on a logical b- no, basis. No, 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 mate, you can't. And because, as he said again, it's not a libertarian party mm. and he's obliged to actually represent me and all the other uh, supporters. Mm. And he actually did say to the journalist, look, this has nothing to do with the ACT Party. And next time, he'll stop at that point. Yeah. What I think is actually good about it, though, yeah. is that he's actually shown us all uh, that he's not a politician. Mm. And it would be quite good to have someone in Parliament who's not a politician, <laughs> who doesn't actually think about every single word before they make it. And that tells us what you're going to be doing over the next year is uh, you know, teaching him to be a politician, I guess. So how do you do that? Oh, I've been doing a bit of that because mm. I've been saying, so, you know, he said, well, you know, how do you answer a question like that? Because I, 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 I like being honest. And I said, well, you don't actually have to answer every question. <laughs> now, you, you might think that's obvious, but it's actually not obvious, especially if what your business has been, has been thinking about, Difficult questions. Mm. And, you know, he's got a PhD from Cambridge yeah. thinking about difficult questions. Do you want to be back in Parliament yourself? Uh, no, I do not. Is and, um, look, I've done 30 years. Uh, That's three life sentences. Yeah. <laughs> so your contract will finish in November then, I guess? I haven't got a contract. Ah. Oh, no, I'm a volunteer. I, I'm not getting paid. The person yeah. getting paid is Matt McCartan. He's being paid on the taxpayer, now, but not me. I'm, is, isn't... I'm doing it for it. And that's what I think. The Labor Party should remember is, hey, if you're campaigning, um, you should do that with your own money, not with mine. Did you laugh at the fact that Matt came back the same week you came back as as well, considering your old battles at, uh, uh, over Auckland Central and uh, you know the long history I between think, you two? I had to say, I did think it was pretty extraordinary. Yeah. That here we are. He's managing one campaign and, and I'm managing another. Um, but I do think it's you know it's a bizarre appointment. I mean. Mm. Here's Mr. McCartan, who basically is a class warrior, and the idea that having a class warrior running the Labor Party is going to win them votes is wrong. Well, I can tell you what they've done, but they've swallowed their own propaganda. Mm. I mean, the Labor Party thinks it doesn't have to win any votes in the middle. All it has to do is get the million missing votes. Well, actually, it's around about 700,000 people who didn't vote. Yeah. And they got this idea in their mind that the reason they didn't, that they're all Labour voters and they didn't make big enough promises. Well, it's a lot of rubbish. Um, they're not all Labour voters, but even the ones that didn't vote, a lot of them didn't vote because they quite like John mm. Key. And if you listen to Matt McCartan, everybody who lives in South Auckland is sort of unemployed, not a benefit. And, and angry, well, actually, a lot of people in South Auckland own their own home, yeah. um, and they okay. think Matt McCartan's uh, a mad radical too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So the Labour Party's going to lose as many votes as it gains. Um, okay. Uh, we're running out of time. I could talk to you for half an hour, obviously, but, you know, what a journey you've been on, you know, from, from the Labour Party through to the uh, privatisation process, which obviously was quite um, fundamental in, in the way you've developed and then ACT and and then to what you've been doing in business since then. The journey of Richard Preble, uh, do you look back on it and see yourself changing and, and do you see it as growing or, you know, what was the, what was the lesson oh, you sure. learned from I, that when journey? When I listen to people who say, um, I wouldn't change anything, 
I think what an odd life they've lived. If you didn't learn, let's say you didn't learn anything from experience. Uh, but some things that I believe when I was 18 years old, passionately, I passionately believe now. I mean, the reason I joined the Labour Party is I thought that it was a party of equal opportunity. Uh, and I actually did believe, so when I hear people saying the government should own businesses, I thought that too. Mm. Well, the government put me in charge of all the businesses, and so I now know, you might think it, but I know the government is hopeless at running businesses. Mm. Uh, now, business is quite good at it. There are a lot of things that government should do that only the government should do, and it should stop doing the things that other people could do. So being in charge of all the government businesses made me first invent the SOE process, which, by mm. the way, the left hated, and now they say they love. Mm. But I looked at that, and even that a halfway house, we ought to get out of all of it. Mm. Um, and when John Keith says there's nothing else left to sell, I think, oh, that's that'll come as a surprise to, to Air everybody. New Zealand. For the last or 30, to, to, to Air New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, well, rubbish, yeah, of course, there's heaps of things. He's, like, he's right, though. He's right. No, we're, he's we're not. Also, he's the half of all the power companies. Oh, okay, but that's it. But that's it. We're getting to the point where, you know, it's oh, a, no, there's selling, a lot of, selling, there's selling, a lot of other things that the government actually owns that it, yeah, ought, that it ought to get. It, it ought to get out of all business because but the things you, like, you regula- the things like regulating the economy... It's things like, like like making sure that we've we've got a proper regulatory environment. They are intellectually extremely difficult, mm. and it's a great shame that some of the best brains of the government are doing things that business could do. So, I, so I think that. But the, what I was to say was that uh, when you have nothing left to sell, it's been a go-to in terms of oh look, we've got a bit of debt now. Let's sell off a few more assets. It's actually going to force the government to actually be oh, a lot more. Oh well, no, I don't even agree with that one. Don't you? No, no, that's nonsense. I mean, um, when you lose the language, you have to look when you them. lose control of the language, you lose the debate. And I say, look, I never sold any assets. I sold some government liabilities. <laughs> and let me give you a simple example. If the government had sold, I forget what they now call it, mm. Coal Corp, Solid Energy, if the Labor Party had sold it when they had a chance to, we'd have got a billion dollars. Mm. Instead, we've lost hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm. We could even look at TVNZ. TVNZ was worth $1.8 billion. Yeah. It's now worth $300 million. We take the railways. Mm. The Labor Party bought back the railways for $800 million. I mean, toll can see a mug when they see one. Mm. The Treasury did a valuation of it, and the railways is worth nothing. But it's worse than that. You and I are going to put in a billion dollars that I'd rather put into kindergartens, health, and hospitals into running a railway. I mean, uh, now the government businesses are potential liabilities, and if you want to say, I'm never going to sell a business, then you're what you're saying is eventually you'll end up running a museum. I mean, eventually mm. the railways will be a museum, mm. but we'll still run it because the Prime Minister said we're never going to sell anything. Okay. <laughs> Look at you. You're right back into the game already. You've been oh, out of it for 10 it. years and Sally, <laughs> boom. Hello. Welcome back, Richard Preble. Yes, Thank you. But you can see we need a different party. <laughs> if you haven't heard these arguments, that's because we haven't been given a chance to say them. <laughs>